So I'm going to start with symbols. The most important symbol is the Trinity knot. So we see this in lots of places. We see this on the book that both Claudia and Noah have at some point. We see this at the base of the mountain in both the painting that we see on the wall of the hospital where Mikhail ends up when he goes back to 1986. And then at the base of the same mountain, we see on Noah's back, the back tattoo. We also see it on the wall in the caves. And lastly, we see it when Jonas checks into Regina's hotel and he has all these different drawings up on his wall. We see it there as well. So here's the picture of that mountain with the symbol at its base that I'm talking about. So we see it up on the wall in the hospital. And then the second time we see it, Mikhail has actually taken it down and it's sitting on his bed. So we know that Mikhail has seen that as well. We also know that Noah look we have the same image on his back and then the back on the on the left that's jonas's back so similar kind of mountain shape or maybe that's just scars i don't know and now i'll go over locations really quick so the two red houses the smaller of the houses that's jonas hannah and michael before he committed suicide the slightly larger red house is the nielsen's that's ulrich katrina magnus and then the mansion, the big house, that's uh, Bartos. And then the gray apartment complex we see a lot. This is where Ulrich's parents, Tronte and Yana, live. And then a couple other locations we see a lot. The cemetery, and you see the church in the background there. You see Regina's hotel, Helg's retirement home. You see that a lot. And then the last uh, thing you see a lot, when we go back to 1953, you see this big mansion, and this is the Doppler mansion who and the patriarch is burned and he's the one who runs the nuclear power plant anyways now we're going to the fun location so first we have the time travel room so helg he has a family cabin and close to this cabin is this entrance way you see here now when you go down the entrance way you step into this room now this is the same room all four photos are the exact same room, just at different points in time. And then we have the caves. So Jonas does say that within the caves is a wormhole. He does use that term. Now there's two ways to enter the caves. One is you go through this gate and then you spelunk down. We've seen Claudia do this when she was finding out about the radioactive waste. We've also seen Charlotte do this when she was investigating the disappearance of the boys. So now when you spelunk down this way, you come to this door. So this is a door that Claudia, who was running the power plant, she got Alexander, who now runs the power plant in 2019. Claudia, back in 1986, she got Alexander, who's now current 2019 head of the power plant, to weld this door. And the only time we ever see this door is when someone, like I say, goes through that gate and then spelunks down. And now we have the other entrance to the caves that we see Jonas go into, we see Ulrich go into. Now, when you enter the caves, some things that help you, this is the, the cave traveling toolkit. We see the light. I don't know if there's anything special about this light or it's just a standard light. And then we also see, I think it's a Geiger counter. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but it measures some kind of radio, 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 radioactivity. That's a tricky word. Measures something anyways. So when you enter the caves via that entrance, you find this string. So someone has tied a string to this point. And if you follow the string, we've seen both Jonas and Ulrich follow this string. You eventually get to this door. Now, one important thing about this door, we know it's been here since at least 1953 because at different points in the show they show us the door and then they show us the time period and we see all three time periods and the door is there each time so whoever put this door here it's been there for a while and then if you go through this door you enter this passageway where there's howling wind and you see every time someone goes through this you see the wind start to howl and their and their hair blows back now I couldn't find the image but as you go down this passageway there's actually a fork and we see Jonas as he goes down, he, you can go either right or left. Now, both times we've seen people go right. We see Ulrich go right and we see Jonas go right. So I'm not sure whether going right or left makes some kind of difference between how you travel and time. And we also know that when someone opens this door and starts to go down this corridor, we see the lights start to flicker throughout wind and we see this at the school, we see this at the police station. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some family trees I made, mostly of the four main families that we have in the show. So the first big family is the Tiedemann family. So Egon, he's the policeman that 
he arrests Ulrich way back in 1953. Then he grows up and then he becomes an alcoholic because his wife leaves him. And also he runs into Ulrich now as a kid and he recognizes that same stare. So he has this problem with Ulrich and no one really knows why, but it's actually because he met an adult Ulrich when he was younger and he has bad vibes from him because of that. Then we have Claudia. So when she's young, Tronte comes to town. She has a crush on Tronte. She eventually has an affair with Tronte. Now, Claudia also knows Helg when he's younger. Helg has a big crush on her, but she doesn't really reciprocate it. So Claudia becomes the first female head of this power plant. It's very important. Eventually, Claudia grows up and becomes this badass time traveler locked in this battle with Noah. Now, Claudia is the mother of Regina. Claudia isn't very nice to Regina. Regina's a nerd. When she's a young girl, she gets bullied a lot. And eventually, this mysterious guy who calls himself Alexander comes out of nowhere, rescues Regina. Eventually, they end up getting married, and Alexander impresses Claudia at this job interview, welds this door for her like I talked about, and eventually Alexander starts running the power plant. Now Regina and Alexander, they have Bartos. Also Regina runs a hotel, she has cancer now, and she doesn't really get along with other people in the town particularly well. And then Bartosh and Jonas used to be best friends, but then they've had a bit of a falling out because of Martha, and now right now they're not really on good terms. And now we have the Nielsen family. So it starts with Agnes. She is fleeing an abusive husband. She comes to Winden, is very glamorous, seems to be from the big city. She comes with her younger son, Tronte. Now Tronte has these burns on his arm, so he's a victim of abuse. Tronte is also fairly good looking, start, strikes up a relationship with Claudia, like I talked about, eventually has an affair with her, and Tronte eventually marries Yana. Now, Yana knows about Tronte's affairs, actually lies about his affairs to the police. So um, on the day that Tronte's son, Mads, goes missing, Tr Tronte's wife, Yana, lies to the police about Tronte being there all night when really he wasn't there. Yana thinks he was off having an affair with Claudia. Now, Tronte and Yana have two kids. They have Mads and they have Ulrich. So Mads is the one who goes missing way back in 1986. Then he shows up in 2019 and his eyes are all burned. Ulrich marries Katerina. So Katerina was kind of the cool bad girl in high school. Ulrich and Katerina were an item. Someone, actually Hannah, lied about Ulrich raping Katerina. So there's a lot of bad blood um, created there, but actually Ulrich and Katerina, they always thought it was Regina who um, made up the story. So it's only recently they find out that it was actually Hannah who made up that story. But anyways, Ulrich and Katerina, they have three kids. They have Magnus, they have Martha, and they have Mikkel. Now Mikkel is the one who goes back to 1986. Turns out that he's actually Jonas's father, so we'll get to that in the next family. Martha is the one who, like I said, Jonas really likes. She started dating Bartos. Then Jonas and her started becoming a thing, but Jonas realizes that she's her aunt, so he breaks it off, and now Martha and Noah, or sorry, Martha and a uh, little Freudian slip there, Martha and Bartos are back together. And then lastly is Magnus. Now he starts dating um, Franziesca. I don't really know how to say her name, but he starts dating um, someone from the Doppler family, which again, I'll get to in the next slide. So now we have the Doppler family burned. Now he started the whole nuclear power plant way back in 1953. He was a big proponent of it. Eventually his son, Helg, goes missing. And there's this interesting scene where Burns says, I don't care about nuclear power. I don't care any about anything. I just really want my son back. Eventually he does get his son back. Now Helg, he has a really interesting storyline. I explained it in another video. Um, I d definitely recommend checking it out. But anyways, Helg is the father of Peter. Now, Peter is Jonas's psychiatrist. He also is having um, quasi-gay affairs, and he's cheating on his wife, Charlotte. Now, Charlotte is the one in charge of the investigation in 2019. She's investigating, trying to find these missing boys, and they have two kids. They have Franziska, so that's the person who's having the relationship with Magnus, and then Elizabeth is deaf. She's a minor character. She was really good friends with Yazin, which is one of the boys who disappears. And then last family is the Conwald. So Ions, she is a nurse back in 1986. She takes this boy named Mikkel or Michael under her wing and eventually 
Michael grows up, he marries Hannah. Now, Hannah is the one who accuses Ulrich of rape as kids. She also then begins having an affair with Ulrich in 2019. Michael eventually kills himself by suicide, and Michael and Hannah, they have a son named Jonas, who's Fairly big character on the show, let's say. And then there's this guy. He's pretty shady. He is part of the police. He's working with Charlotte investigating, but he's also seems to be corrupt, and he's working with Alexander, the head of the nuclear power plant. Alexander's kind of his boss and can get him to do shady stuff. And then last family, they're a fairly minor family, the Obendorfs. And we see the parents at the start, they're worried about their missing kid. And Eric is the missing kid. And eventually he turns up, I'll show you here, in 1953 at this construction site, we see the two boys that turn up. And one of them we can see is Eric from 2019. And the other one we can see is Yazin from 2019. So I'm going to end the video there. I have another video where it was a lot longer and I went into way more depth. This I tried to do something a little different, make it more image based. Hopefully between those two videos, you should get a better idea about the show. And I will also do more videos. I want to do one about time travel paradoxes and how they relate to this show, how the show deals and explores time travel paradoxes. And then also another one about unanswered questions because there, I think there are some major questions that I have about the show that I don't think are really explained. So I'm going to put that video out and I don't know, maybe someone in the comments section can um, help me because I definitely have some questions about the show.